Hello, this is Chris Barks from Arcane Games, and uh, this is a tutorial for us internally on our new process for getting um, uh, models and their new textures from blue into uh, the game. So we're going to be working inside the AIW2 Unity Prep project entirely with this. And the idea is that we're putting stuff in here that um, later goes in the AIW2 uh, goodie box asset bundle, which the game then loads. And these are the graphics for the ships in the game. Um, it's worth noting um, that in this particular video, what I'm going to be focusing on creating is um, essentially the top resolution model with all its textures merged together and with the um, with the model actually in the game uh, um, in the prep project. We're not going to put it in the asset bundle in this video, and we're also not going to have it ready for use within the game. There's other steps required for that. Um, so step one, though, is we have to actually get this thing in and make it look the way that it's supposed to look using the correct shaders. Um, there's a um, Google Drive um, folder, which I will send the link to. And Blue is going to be putting folders in here with um, freshly exported versions of the texture maps. And she's going to have the um, meshes that go along with that. Uh, in the existing um, prep project, we have a whole bunch of other textures and meshes that are pre-existing for the ships uh, in question. However, um, we're going to just ignore the stuff that's previously there because um, she's overpainted everything in Substance Painter. And in order for her work to match up, we have to use the new meshes and you know whatever those are, and we have to use um, you know the new textures. So there's no point. So um, anyway, it'll come out of here and it'll go in here, and then we're going to replace um, what we did have with what we are now going to have. So um, we're not going to be upgrading old stuff. It's going to be a whole sw wholesale swap. Now, there's a few that have already been done, and that includes the arc, both arcs, and um, the uh, Special Forces guard post here, the Special Forces ninja hideout, anyway. And these ones, um, they have a shader on them. I click in. That is Arcan Alloy slash Core Replacement. This is from kind of a middle period where I was using um, the alloy shaders way of packing stuff. And I painted those at, over top of what Blue had done and um, built those together a certain way. Um, now we're no longer using alloy. We're using some shaders of mine that kind of mimic it. We're packing things a little bit better. Um, and blue is overpainting them, so we're going to use a different shader. Anything that's using um, an older, a different shader, um, like uh, custom amped metal, or um, there, there's a variety of them anyway. Yes, yeah, custom amped metal again. Uh, those are all outdated, and we can easily know ah, okay, it's so that shader. Uh, showing up, so therefore it's outdated. A couple of notes. Um, one, normally your view is going to be like this, where you see game or scene or whatever. Um, I like to drag it so that I've got a split view because um, this side gives me a nice um, projection of what I'm seeing over here looking fully nice. If I, I have to turn on this thing called screen link, which is something that I created, um, and then you can zoom in. You'll notice that the views are slightly different. The one on the right is a little more zoomed in. That is partly, um, that is because uh, the field of view is different on the cameras. This is the field of view used in the game. This is the field of view that's default in the Unity Scene Editor. Uh, when you select these ones and are you know, making tweaks with things and having trouble seeing it because it's all highlighted, still looks just fine over here. 
Um, the other things that you may notice is that, um, uh, for one, you may find yourself accidentally um, clicking into the um, background and getting this uh, named, not that. You may find yourself getting the space BG um, selected. So one thing you're probably going to want to do is go into layers, and then uh, there's a space BG layer there, and just hit lock. If you wind up trying to select a ship and you're selecting this weird circle instead, that's why. You'll also notice there's this weird, like, kind of a house thing for lighting there. Th that is an IBL image, which is used in the ambient lighting. Uh, you can turn that off by coming in here and uh, clicking that and then clicking skybox, and now you've just got gray. It's a lot less distracting. Um, you'll also notice that there are some of these things that are just crazily overblown with the glow. And what I've decided is that it's not the glow that's a problem, really. It's the way that we're setting up the um, the model. So consider the bloom effect that we've got at the moment as final. You'll notice how it looks great here, 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 and on the other thing. But on the older models, it looks awful. So we're going to work with this bloom effect. We're going to assume that this is the level of bloom that's happening, and we're going to tune our emission amounts to that. Um, there's no point in fixing the old models because we're just about to ditch them anyway. Um, so as we're putting in new models, though, assume that, uh, assume that that's being changed, um, or assume that that'll be stable. OK, so let's assume now that uh, we're downloading uh, some stuff. I've got a plasma torpedo launcher that's got a um, bunch of PNGs that Blue created, and then I've got an FBX. So this is what you would be pulling down from the uh, uh, file from that uh, folder on Google Drive. Now, you'll go into scale examples if you're not already there. Um, and th this is, again, in the AI war unity prep one uh, when you first go in you'll notice the scenes aren't linked click that so that you are um, uh, you're first going to want to put a place to uh, find a place to put your stuff and actually come to think of it we're not going to keep this long term anyway what you're working on uh, the 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 <laughs> there there there's several stages to this there's the stuff from Blue, which is going to be Atlas, and then there's, and we're not going to keep that. And then there's the stuff that you've combined, and we are going to keep that. So um, we may as well just put all the stuff that we're going to combine in this temporary folder under Assets. You can right-click and hit Show in Explorer. Um, and so there's temporary right here. And so I'm just going to go ahead and just stick this in here. There's really no point in putting it somewhere else. It'll just actually make it um, slower to set up, frankly. So we'll put that here. Um, and now to do a brief import. Okay, um, so we click on this. This is the FBX right here. You can see it on the bottom, plasma torpedo launcher.fbx. This is what it looks like right now because uh, its materials are in the materials folder and they've come through saying uh, just the standard shader and then um, that uh, and, and nothing on them. So, uh, Quick bit of terminology, just because I know we have some non-artists who are helping out with this, for which I thank you hugely. There are a few different things that contribute to how a ship looks. Um, first of all, we've got the actual model, which is the same thing as saying a mesh, although there might be several meshes that make up a model. Um, and there might even be sub-meshes within the meshes. Um, the model is made up of vertices, which are the points that define the faces, which are the actual polygons that you're used to. There's a shader, which is basically a little computer program that runs on your graphics card 
um, all 900 cores of it or whatever. It's running these tiny little pl programs for each pixel or each face, depending on what the nature of the shader is. Then we have textures, which are um, just PNG files. Um, and then we have materials, and a material is something that is uh, a material has a shader, and then it has uh, data plugged into the uh, fields that the shader defines. So some of that data is going to be um, textures, and some of the data is things like colors and numbers, like floating point numbers, that sort of thing. Um, and then we apply a material to a uh, mesh in order to get something that actually looks like anything. So right now, this mesh is just gray because the materials came in as default. Uh, since the materials are properly applied to all the mesh parts, though, once we define the material properly, it will look correct there, too. Now, we have two materials here this time, which means we need to do uh, atlasing. And to atlas, what that means is we're going to take um, each one of these pairs, the diffuse maps, that's the color, um, the metallic roughness and occlusion map, that's how, uh, how much it looks like metal, how rough or smooth that metal is, and how blocked is the light that's hitting that part of the model. We're taking those maps. And then the normal maps, which are saying, um, where is there extra bumpiness that makes it look like the model is more detailed than it really is, which is flat polygons. And then the emission maps, which are basically like light bulbs. Okay, And so, each one of these four things are going to be combined and all the what we call UVs, which are um, coordinates for each face on the mesh that point to the proper texture locations. All the UVs will be updated. All this stuff is automated. Um, so that should help make things a little bit easier. Sorry about that. Phone call. Um, at any rate, uh, the bottom line is we're going to be combining these because we have more than one material. If we only had more, if we only had one material, then what we would need to do is combine meshes only, and their UVs where they point to different textures would be unchanged. So there's two different processes that we'll go through, um, and. Maybe it might actually just be more straightforward to do it the same way either time, both times. We'll see. Um, you can use this thing called Pro Draw Call Optimizer um, in both cases. Um, whether or not that creates any inefficiency, we'll find out. If it if it does create a problem, we'll introduce a second um, step. But almost all of them have, well, a lot of them have multiple materials. So, all right, so. First of all, we select both the materials and we change the shader to be Arcan and it will be Arcan combined or Arcan combined emissive. It will be Arcan combined emissive if at least one of the textures here has an, um, if at least one of the materials has an emission one, uh, it'll be something underscore three underscore emission. In this case, both of these do. If neither of them did, then you could just do Arcan combined instead, and it would not have the emission, uh, emission part. Um, if only some of them do, then there's a texture called black, where you click select right here, and then you start typing black, and then it's right there, and you just select black. And um, when you do that, it will atlas properly, and it will have emission on the texture that actually has one, and it'll just be black on the on the one that doesn't. Black means there's no light coming out, and some other color means some degree of light. The brighter the color, the brighter the light. Um, okay, so at this point, we've got um, both of these set to the proper shader, and so we're just going to go down the list. So attachments, diffuse, goes into main text. 
on the attachments material. Attachments, metallic roughness occlusion goes into the metallic roughness occlusion one on there. Uh, the normal map goes in here. Now, this is going to complain immediately saying this texture is not marked as a normal map. You can click fix on that and it won't look correct until you do. However, if you do that, you're going to have to undo that before you do an Atlas merge. Um, the Atlas merge will break and do weird stuff if you click fix and don't undo it. In fact, I'm going to go through that process right now and show you the wrong way to do it and how to fix it. So we'll go ahead and hit fix. Um, and then emission, drag that there. Fuselage, do diffuse. Metallic roughness occlusion. Emission, I misclicked. And then normal and fix, which we're doing fix because we're breaking this on purpose. Now, um, when I click back under here, we've got the plasma torpedo launcher and boom, now it looks like something. So this is a turret. And so I'm going to go into this turret section. This just, this doesn't really matter. This is just for organization in this scene, but this scene doesn't matter. Um, the actual placement in the final game meshes matters a little more, but even there, it's 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 a little bit uh, not super important. All right, so uh, at this point, it's in here, but where is it in the scene? Uh, if I hold right mouse button, I can look around and try and see it. Um, if I hit Q, then this puts me in a mode where I can pan with it like this. That's not very useful. W lets me move the thing whatever it is I've got selected. E lets me rotate the thing that I have selected, and R lets me scale the thing that I've selected. I normally try and keep it on W, but do what you like. In this particular case, um, that's way off somewhere, so hit F and it'll take you to it, and now you can see um, where it is. Whoa, that's tiny though. I lost it already. So you hit F again, and you can see this is far too small. So first of all, let's hit R, and then scale this up a fair bit. Doesn't even matter if we get the right scale or not. Um, just wanna be able to see it and move it around. So let's move it over to the regular area. Um, you can click on the planes here, or you can click on the individual handles for the widget to move it around. And um, I'm gonna stick it right here for the moment. So when I zoom in on this, I can see, look at all this detail and all that little, um, it doesn't look flat. It looks rough and has all these little points where it's catching the light and so forth. That's the normal map. Um, if I had not said fix on the normal map, then it would look different. In fact, I will go right in here. And if I take these and I uh, select them both, and instead of being normal map, I go to default and hit apply. Prior to clicking fix, this is what it looked like. And so um, I don't know if I mentioned, while you're holding the right mouse button, you can use WASD to move around like a first person shooter and then Q to go down, E to go up. So that's what I'm doing right now. So you can see all that crunchiness, all those little bits of detail, those are now gone. The paint is still there, but that extra bit of depth that they have is gone. So I'm gonna go back here and switch these back to normal map and hit apply. And boom, you can see the difference. Not only that, it changes the, abs the, the appearance of the color of it because it's catching the light really differently. And we're using image-based lighting um, or IBL. And so that has a big impact. Um, so when you see the color change like that, that's what's going on. I'm trying to give you a, a basic grounding in what is going on under the hood here so that when something inevitably goes wrong, you have some basis for understanding what that is and why. Okay, so um, at this point um, over here, this is a game object which uh, it has an animator on it, which I don't want. And then it has a bunch of sub objects. Um, and we want all of these sub objects probably to be one larger object. Each one of these is a mesh. 
which you can see there. And then each one has a reference to one of the two materials. Um, now, when I click around in here, um, the reason that I might want to leave some of these separate is if they're going to be animated independently. So if there's something that would uh, rotate or do some other sort of effect like that, then leaving it separate is a good idea. Um, otherwise, um, combining them is the way to go. In this case, there's nothing circular. There's nothing that I plan on having rotate. Let's just combine the whole thing. So um, these are marked as normal maps at the moment. I, I clicked the fix button. And so it's going to break when I do this, but we're going to do it this way anyway. So I went to Window, and I chose uh, Pro Draw Call Optimizer. Sorry, I do it by habit. All right, at this point, I've got the Plasma Torpedo Launcher parent selected. I'm going to hit Add Selected in Children. And then now it's got the shader there. And it says, here's what the atlas size is going to be, 2896 by 2896, plus or minus 2.5%. Um, now, something to bear in mind is that um, the size of the textures going in is what determines the size of the textures coming out. Um, and so I'm going to clear this real quick. And let's take a look at these textures down here. Blue does them at large scale, and that's often larger than what we need. She's doing them uh, at, at a scale that is wonderful, but let's see if we can get this lower. Now, I've tested this. What you're going to want to do also is per material, all of the textures should be the same size for the purposes of atlasing. Um, so let's, uh, the max size here will set how they come in. So pretty much what you're going to be getting from blue is 2048 by 2048. Um, let's sit a little back from the, um, from the mesh and let's down this to 1024. It's only giving you powers of two. So the next step down is half. Um, with powers of two, thing to bear in mind, though, is when you have it, the number of pixels is actually quartered, and um, the amount of RAM that's used is also quartered. And by RAM, I mean VRAM on the graphics card, and I mean RAM in uh, you know actual RAM on the computer, on the, and it is quartered in terms of storage space. So having something is a big deal if you can, and it still looks good. So uh, we'll go down 1024. Let's see what this looks like. This is on the fuselage. I can't tell any particular dis difference. Bear in mind, this thing is tiny. We're normally going to be seeing it from way off. Even when I'm zoomed in this close, I can't see an appreciable diff dis difference. Ugh. So let's try 512. Same deal. I can't see an appreciable difference. Um, let's not go below 512. All right, so now the attachments. 2048, let's try 1024. Now, sometimes there's going to be an appreciable enough difference that you're going to want to go, no, that just looks bad when I go down too much. All right, but this is fine. So let's try 512. Um, Gosh, I thought that that would look bad, but it doesn't. So let's try back to 1024. <laughs> That's funny. That really looks fine. Um, you know what? Let's try 256 on the main body. That's tiny, but why not? Okay, that starts looking bad. I can see weird distortions there. Well, only when I'm incredibly close, and they still don't look, just because it's all black body there. Yeah, it looks a little squeaky. Yeah, that's much better. OK, uh, the larger the ship, the lo more likely you are going to want to keep it at like the 2048 size. So for, for instance, for Guardians, you're probably not going to scale those down much. Um, unless there's a bunch of maps. 
for all the little ships, you're probably going to scale them down a fair bit. It's worth noting that not all ships are going to scale down as well. This one is a very grungy, very dirty ship, which I love. Um, and so it crunches down very, very well. For the ones that have a lot of straight lines and a lot of really clean looks to them, they will compress progressively worse. So um, it's always a bit of a judgment call. Get it as small as makes sense. You know, it's a balance between performance and visuals. Nobody in their right mind is going to com complain about the visuals of what I just showed you here versus what it was before. And we're saving. Um, this is 341 kilobytes um, at the moment at 512. At 2048, it is 5.3 megs times four times two. That's insane. You know, see, you see what I'm saying in terms of the savings? So um, it is a really big deal to compress these down. Uh, we don't have the video ram to spare to have every ship at 2048 by 2048 resolution and not only that it would be absolutely pointless so um that's my spiel on that so now that we've scaled things down I click plasma torpedo launcher again add selected and children now we have a new size 724 by 724 plus or minus two and a half percent. Now, what that means is that for each one of these sets of four, um, they're going to combine from, I think it was what, 256 did we do on this? No, 512 and 512. We did 512 on both. Okay, yeah. So they're both going to combine uh, the two 512s combined to make a 724. Fine, that's fine. So uh, at this point, it needs a name. This is required. Um, we'll call it Plasma Torpedo Launcher. Bake Atlas. If it's a um, if it's a really huge model, then you can go get coffee or whatever. Um, generally speaking, it's not going to take all that long. And we're done. Um, now, this right here, this is the old one. This is the one that we've been converting from. I can actually delete this here. Just deleting it out of the scene doesn't really do anything, which is great. This one here is a new one that's been created in place. And um, if I click it, you can see its material is here. And, um, oh, I can't delete that old one. Hold on. Um, undo, undo, undo. Okay. So if you click it, you notice how this looks weird now? It's it's like it's too crunchy and it's got this weird kind of slimy shininess to it. It changed color again in an unexpected way. Um and look at the normal map. This is not what a normal map should look like. This thing is all red. That's weird. Now our metallic roughness occlusion, this is all this could be anything. This could be pinks, blues, greens, it doesn't matter. It's packed in different ways. And so you'll see all sorts of different things coming through. This is a packed map, that's fine. The main text should look like whatever the ship is painted. This metallic roughness occlusion will look like whatever. The emission will look like whatever the lights are on it. And the normal map should be shades of blue. This is not shades of blue, which means we did it wrong, which I told you I was going to do it wrong on purpose. So we're going to delete this. This is all stuff in scale examples data dash atlas under the temporary folder. And it deleted this prefab here that it created. I'm going to re-enable using the here, this checkbox in the inspector. Notice it's still invisible. I select all these things. Actually, what I can do is I can just hit revert and it'll become visible again, although now it's tiny because I hit revert. So I'm going to go hit R, scale it up again. And now this thing looks the way it should. Now, the reason why the normal maps came through weird is because these things are of texture type normal map. 
AKA we hit the fix button earlier in the process. Don't hit the fix button and you won't have the problem. <clears throat> or if you hit the fix problem and you run fix button and you run into the problem, then hit default instead. Uh, come back in here, select them, select texture type default instead of normal map, and then hit apply. Now, this looks flat. This is no normal maps at all at this point. Basically, it's reading in data that doesn't mean anything to it. Um, now, when I select this, it will convert, and I go to Pro Draw Call Optimizer, add selected in children, plasma torpedo launcher, Bake Atlas. Um, this is now going to co combine these correctly. Um, Unity cannot, Unity uses a different format for uh, the normal maps. And when the tool tries to cross combine, uh, it doesn't work. Now, you'll notice that when this finished um, coming across, it suddenly changed in the way it looks again. This time, though, it's not a problem. Um, it looks like it should have applied the normal map properly. So this time, for real, I can delete the plasma torpedo launcher. In this uh, version here, the combined emissive, um, this um, yeah, this one has uh, if I go under the scale example atlas, here is what it created. This is the combined mesh, which this is a dot asset, not a dot fbx. It's just one mesh all in one piece. Uh, this is our prefab, which we see right here, which a prefab is basically linking the settings from something. And then here are our combined atlases. And, um, oh, this is actually not format uh, texture map there. So when I click on the material, now it's got a fix now. Click that and boom. Now things look as they should. You can see the light catching little bits of it and so forth. Uh, it's actually a little on the harsh side with the way the light is catching it. But um, anyhow, um, now that we've combined this, I told you we weren't going to use the things from earlier. And so this plasma torpedo launcher in this materials folder from before, we can delete that. That's what blue gave us. And now we're down to this stuff, which is what we've merged together. Um, at this point, you'll notice that our emission is not really doing much that's interesting. There's no glow off of it. Um, it's time to adjust that. Um, so this is set to be emission of white, all Fs at the bottom, and that includes the alpha. So the reason why it's not glowing is because it's in high dynamic range lighting. The normal lighting range is between zero and one. High dynamic range lets you go above um, one and then it gets tone mapped back down. But because it goes above one, it can play into things like bloom. So that's where we come in here and we take the current brightness and the brightness right now is one. If I go down to here, brightness is 0. 0.6. Go back up to the top and then I can start cranking this up some. Ah, suddenly some glow. Um, but I don't want it so much glow. I want a little bit of glow, but not too much. So 1.939. Looks good to me. I'm happy with that. Okay, so I've um, been using my Space Mouse Pro to move around some. You can't normally do it that smoothly. Sorry about that. Um, 3D Mouse, love it. But um, okay, this is now, for a lot of intents and purposes, kind of sort of done. Um, but there's a few problems with it. Oh, I have the tendency to try and do this. Hey, why can't I select it? It's because this is the game view. Over here, the scene view, you can select it. now. You'll notice I, I hit W. Where's my widget for moving this around? It's actually way over there. 
The reason is because when this thing got baked um, into one mesh, it put the pivot point way over there. That's going to be a problem for us later. So what you're going to want to do is, I think, center, yeah, tools, quick edit, edit selected mesh. Apparently, you can also hit Alt E. I haven't tried that. And then under here, hit center pivot. Boom. And hit save. Save changes edited mesh. Yes, please. And it's done. Now our pivot is right at the center. Um, the scale for this thing is maybe right, maybe not. I just kind of scaled it to something arbitrary. Um, later, um, we'll talk about uh, how we actually are going to scale these things to get them into the game. And we'll talk about LODs, levels of detail, and some other things like that. For now, this is our initial version. Let's put this in uh, the place where it's going to go. So we've got this um, underneath assets. There's the temporary, which we've been working in. And then there's final game meshes. And this is the highest quality version of this final game mesh that we're going to be working with. So under turrets here, let's create a new one. I'm going to call it. Just going to copy it from this, create folder, plasma torpedo launcher, click into here, scale example atlas is the name of the scene, so it always puts that stuff in there. Drag that in here, plasma torpedo launcher material. Um, everything is happy. Um, I can now do a commit. And um, you may not want to commit the scale examples, or if you are wanting to do something like that, make your own copy, just because uh, those don't merge properly. So if there are three or four of us committing to that, then um, we'll get conflicts. And in the case of conflicts, you can either hit resolve using theirs or resolve using mine. And I don't really care. Um, it, it doesn't really matter to me. So I'm just going to not check that in right now but all this other stuff is getting checked in and we'll say plasma torpedo it's actually fairly out <laughs> um launcher um lod zero mesh and materials hit okay And at any rate, that'll then upload the stuff that you did. And um, at this point, it's not really ready for use in the game. However, it looks the way that it should. And as a, it's as efficient as it um, reasonably can be um, for the highest quality that we're going to ever show it in the game. Let's put it that way. We can make it more efficient, but it'll also be lower quality. Um, and we'll probably only do that from when you're looking at it from further away, but we'll get to that in a different video. Um, so this covers the basics of a lot of 3D art and just getting this in place in general. Um, so this is step number one, and we're going to be keeping this stuff forever. This thing that we've created, um, that's going to be our baseline, um, from now on. And, uh, Everything else that we build will include that as part of it. So, um, and a, as a general rule, please try not to check in something that we're not going, that we're not intending to keep, quote unquote, forever. Um, because, and also, please don't reorganize something that you've already organized one way because we wind up wasting um, space on SVN, which I get charged for every month. So, um, and there's no way to you know delete that out without deleting the entirety of SVN. So um, being frugal with the check-ins and just checking in stuff that's actually ready for uh, use is what to do. So um, thanks for watching.